Hey guys, sunset, Friday afternoon. I think I just heard dad shoot. Maybe dad just shot a deer. I don't know, I'm not 100% positive. It was a buck, it might have been a doe, but dad's got a doe permit anyway, so. Oh, the deer had stood here and heard me coming. And that's where dad is. We might have a deer down, guys. long season for us and if we could at least get a doe man I think all of us would be happy oh it's going right over there oh my gosh that might have worked out good I'll bring you back in a sec Good thing I don't have a doe permit. <laughs> awesome. Good footage. Man, about time I get to see a deer for more than five seconds. <laughs> yeah, I feel better. Dad's over there somewhere. Man, that would have been an easy shot. A couple times when they're staying in the open, you could have got the doe, no problem, but. Nah, that's okay. Hey, deer in the woods, that's cool. I'm gonna work my way that way still because if a buck comes on their backtrack or something, then this is a good opportunity for me. I'm staying in the right spot for the right at the right time for once. But anyway, I'm gonna put the camera down and uh, stay ready because you never know. Dad just shot. He's right up on the ridge right here. We got about five to ten minutes left to shoot in light. I think he just shot that doe that I was filming. I don't hear anything, but... As you can see, it's plenty light out still. In the trees, it's darker than it seems. But got about 10 minutes left, Max. I'm gonna wait a little bit and then I'll, uh, I'll bring it back. So he's not sure if he hit it. I'm gonna go up uh, up on top of that shelf right there and uh, give him a hand. I don't know how, I got a light with me. I don't know how well it's gonna do. You can tell things are a little blurry right now. It's not, but uh, I'll give it a go. Oh, there he is. Where was she, uh, where was she standing? Should have run it right out through here someplace, and if you can't find it. Okay, we'll circle around. And... You both ran beautiful, and they, stand, they stood there for probably a minute. So. Oh, right here. Okay, found the track. And I'm pretty sure I didn't touch him. 
and they were not running hard. And every time I grunt, she stops. Oh yeah, look, they're they're, they're not running hard at all. I shouldn't be able to just run after them and see them three times and shoot at them and everything else. <laughs> okay, well let's we'll look for blood and I'm pretty sure I'd, let's I'd, see what the deal is. We're going to uh, look the track over and see if we got blood or not. He thinks it's a clean miss because they're going really slow right here. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna find out. It's the first time we've had to do this all year. This is exciting. Well. Made it back to the shop. We've been circling and circling, looking for blood. It's pretty late now and nothing. They just kind of, yeah, they just hopped off down the hill, I guess, and we looked and looked and looked and didn't see no blood. So we're going to have to cipher out what was going on because we had we had some stuff happening today. We got to talk about let's, let's Let's chat about this. That's that's straight up embarrassing because, for the most part, I I haven't missed that much on deer in 15 years. <laughs> this has been this has been kind of a crazy day. Oh my god! This afternoon, okay, the two of us, uh, we we just go out behind the shop. We walk up the hill. I've got doe permit, right? So there's plenty of deer kicking around. So let's let's go up and see what we can see. And we've been walking around our land for the last couple, three days. And my neighbor's been walking around on their land somewhat with a dog, couple dogs. And like every day, kind of daily practice. And they're jumping deer every day when they go on their walks. <laughs> and we're not jumping any at all. No. <laughs> like, I, I would be happy to jump a deer. I, I, had, I, we had, were qu not I had quite a bit of stuff going on today. So we got to get to the part where you and I separate. Okay, so how it was was we. What happened to you? Because we split up, and yeah, and we're just gonna kind of the, the good bedding area. We're gonna yes. So there was a, there's a patch of woods. Um, so you have the main the main ridge, the main mountain itself, and then on the bottom you've been cutting, and there's all these shelves, and it's super nice, great walking, and and of course all your little logging roads that you've made out there. Are quiet, super quiet walking. Yeah, so we're like, well, the snow's like we inch we came to a, a T intersection at the base of that, and it's probably a hundred yards from the T to the base of where all the shelves actually start coming off. And I was like, well, Dad, if you go up and start in where we had seen the running tracks on the other side of the property, because this this patch of woods is about sixty five acres, right? That we're working right now, and this is kind of how you work a sixty five acre section of woods and try to if you know it well right there's a bunch of greenery like hemlocks and spruce and stuff that they've been bedding in that we've we normally see them in it's where it transitions on the back side of our property from hardwoods to softwoods and they're normally always in there especially because you've been cutting so you and i i'm like well i'll swing towards the ridges and stuff and you go out into the woods and then we'll pinch we'll make this like loop and we'll hook around like that and if we're in there you might hop them to me i'll jump them to you or we might if we end if there's nothing we'll end up back and we'll meet each other and then we'll make another plan after that right and we're doing it into the wind yes so the wind's in our favor yes for like half of it so i i start off and i work down and i stay in the open and i just kind of work where you've been cutting and it you know i'm staying what direction am i headed it's like west west, west west and it's nice and easy and it's quiet and i'm just kind of poking along because i need to wait for you because you have to go because i'm closer to where i need to be than you closer for you yeah right? I, you have to go a bit farther and i need to kind of go slow so that way i give you a chance to get where the deer most likely will run to if i end up busting are them. you between the hill and the porcupine tree not yet Okay. So I, I wait at that fork for quite a while and I step, step, oh. step. I probably go five yards and stop and wait for 30 seconds. Before like I'm, the, I'm going really Before easy. the cut. Yes. Okay. 
And I finally start working along that and I get to a, the first little patch of greenery where they normally bed down. Yep. And I see a running track and it came up out. Right. And I'm like, that's odd. From the West headed East. Yeah. Mm-mm. Headed Southeast. So coming yep. back towards the, where you and I had met. Yeah. And I'm like, that's odd. So I, I'm like, I didn't think I would jump something, but maybe if the wind was bad, you did it. Could be because you went down and started to hook by then. Oh, See, yeah. cause I probably went a little slower than I needed to go because you were probably hammering. How fast were you going? Medium. You okay. Know, well, I was going really slow. Well, I had so, uh, almost three times the distance. Exactly. To cover. So I end up taking that track and it starts headed back down to where uh, Hebert always liked to sit. Yeah. You okay. Know? Now see, and I I went backwards. It's so heading I only, back inside our loop. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I only went I only went probably a hundred yards from where we split up, straight across. I made a really? big I made a big loop, but from the from the time where I saw the bed to where you and I split up, it's only a hundred yards, and there was a bed. Wow. So the deer was laying right where we split. Just about. yeah. Okay. Now see, uh, I didn't see any tracks at all, and did it it cross my track? No. It never did. It no. crossed your track. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it, it went. You and I split. You go a hundred yards, yes. and the thing gets up and runs around in in behind you. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm right there, <laughs> another hundred yards, right over here. Yeah. Yeah. And so I t- that I take the yeah. thing back, and now there's two tracks, oh. and then there's three tracks, and all, all these running deer all of a sudden, and I'm like, I, I'm pretty sure. The walking is really was really quiet today, I but I'm like, where I, they came from. I'm pretty sure that I didn't jump these deer, and there was one bed that was melted out, but there wasn't three. Right. So I'm like, whatever. And there's they so there. much business because this, all of the deer in this entire section of woods have been in about 25 acres, just demolishing the woods. There's tracks everywhere. They've been tearing it up all over, along the shelves, all the way in the bottom. But they're in everywhere. They're in twenty five acres that nobody goes. Yes, like the yes. normal people, the normal woods traffic of people walking their dogs or whatever. The deer are like just off from where people would normally travel. Yes, and they can see it good. They yeah. watch it. Now, see that deer must have been bedded near our intersection, which again is where we walk all the time. Yeah. So yeah, I tell you. On the upwind so side I tell you this. I'm like, hey, I found some running deer, and by then you're you're almost to the base of the shelf. Right, you're you've made the loop back around, right. and you're probably a hundred yards down from where the deer were. Well, in all actuality, I'm not that far. See, you, you and I split, and we start doing our thing, and I've done the big hook, and but when I'm doing the hook itself, I'm going real slow and easy, mm-hmm. and I'm not seeing any new tracks from the walkers. And I thought, and there's two uh, deer coming into our circle that are brand new tracks. When I radioed you, way over by Bob's. When, there's two deer coming in right there. And okay. I'm like, oh, there's some deer. And then I knew there was deer in between us. Maybe. And right, it was maybe. just a doe and a fawn, and, the, and they had gone in. So I go over their tracks. I go a little farther, you know, doing my hook, and I come right on to uh, brand new people tracks and dog tracks. And then I cross over those. I drop down in the gully, and I go up on the next bunch to look down mm-hmm. in the softwoods under the hemlocks. When, when I get there, there's another set of people walking tracks so they doubled or tripled up the amount of time they spent in there and i'm like and that's when you came on the radio and said i just jumped a deer and it's kind of headed backwards a little bit okay so 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 by you then were... i'm like well which way is it going and i didn't hear anything and I, i'm thinking to myself well if it's coming this way which it almost have to be i might as well close the circle you know i'll finish the circle yeah and and the wind was didn't it was getting bad for me but it didn't matter and i'm finishing this will be a great whiteboard wednesday (laughs) yeah and realistically we probably should because we we split and we do this circle three deer go behind you two are in front of me the dog comes along and chases them off Mm -hmm. and they leave they're they're outside the circle coyote or domestic i don't know I would say domestic dogs. Mm, you know, really? This person walking through must have oh, chased oh, the dogs. Oh, scared them off. Scared yeah. them off. Okay. So I, I, I'm now racing to finish the circle and get closer to you because you said you jumped deer. But you said it's going back into the circle. Yes. 
And then back to where you and I split up originally. Right. And then you said it crossed over me and it's going high. And I said, well, as soon as it's going high, it's either going to run around the mountain to the right or run around to the left. And if it does go up and get steep and come to the left, I'm swinging the main mountain and I'm going to see that bugger. Yes. So you say it's going uphill. It's kind of going straight up. Because the deer, the, the tracks went backwards. Like they were going to cross your track after you and I split up the long straightaway that you made after we split up, they were headed back that way yep. and they got into a gully where it was green i start tracking them back and i hear i hear that and i'm mm. like oh they're right here right so i stop and i'm waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and nothing so i'm like well right odds are good it's gonna run especially right after it blew like that so let me just slide in the open i start i i, I probably go like 10 15 yards and then way off to the left headed back towards where right to, headed right where we split up i see a deer and I'm, and I'm, it's hopping and I'm like, oh, it's going to go right through the opening, right through the, right through that little mini, uh, select cut you made. It's going right through there. Right. So yeah. I take off running down the, down the trail and I slide up and it hops out into the trail and my rifle's up and it's a doe. And of course I don't have a doe permit. Right. So I'm like, well, let's see if I can get the camera out. But it's like, it's all, it's running because right. me running, yeah, me it, it was free. hopping and now it sees me running and it runs right. because it's like, ah. Right. So it, it takes off, goes across that little select cut and now goes straight up the shelves, right up, up in the, the cliff. cliff. Yeah. And it goes all the way to the top through and, the hemlocks. And I'm like, well, if it goes up and waits because it can see really well, I'm going to go through the thick stuff back around towards the, the old tree stand. Okay. And I, I went back down to where you and I split up and took the tee and walked out slowly and went up towards the first shelf, that trail over there which is probably a 200 yard circle mm-hmm. around it right. because I'm like, if it waits, I want to see, I it. might be able to get some film of it or I don't want it to go the way it's going because I still think you're back way back, way back over there. I and I'm like, that's, I'm loop. like, and that's not a good push. That's not a good, I won't jump it right to you. That's a bad, right. That right. won't work. Right. So I circle around and nothing, 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 nothing. So I'm like, well, maybe it's going to run back towards your side of this whole shebang right. i climb up over the top and i see where it had stopped it had walked 25 yards it had stopped and waited and waited and p- paced around a little bit and then running tracks nice. so it heard me and of course this is steep yeah this is like what we drag quiet. logan's deer out of like it's steep and it's right. slippery and it's all ledge and it's really hard to get up that quietly yeah and of course it's nothing to just get up it but if i just fly up it and bust them right that's no good either that's no good yeah. so i i get up to the track i walk a little ways and i hear you and I'm like, oh, oh, it maybe it did it, right? I was like, right. that's the first time I've done that, right? And of right. course, I get the camera out, yep. which you guys saw earlier. Yeah. And I, I, I see your track coming across and it went, it was too, it had just crossed behind you. Right. And I'm like, ah, crap. And it either would have had to go way down the uh, back side of the ridge and then parallel you and then come up in front of you. Mm-hmm. That's super unlikely. So I'm like, I, and now this is when I ask you what happened. Okay. Now see, this is where my experience with the deer movement on the entire mountain and how they move on it. This is where that comes in. If you have a hunting spot where you've been hunting for years and you know that when they're here, they run this way or that way. Yes. And in option three, right up over the top and either way, they all end up in this one little pinch point, pinch point down, down below. So. I'm thinking to myself, well, if the deer runs to the right around the mountain, I'm going to swing left and go right out and meet it on the other side. Okay. So uh, by this time, you're halfway on that ridge, which is about how long You come to me how and you said, it's it? going straight up. And I said, well, I'm almost, and you said, it's going straight up parallel with the swamp pond across your clear cut up over the cliffs. Yes. And I'm like, oh, that's perfect. Because by then I'm at the foot of the hill. I've closed our loop. And now I've started that leg up the hill and around the far side. Yep. So I'm swinging the far side yeah. and I'm just starting up and I'm even with the deer right now. If it stopped on top of those ledges, like you th- were hoping for. Yes. Well, I said to myself, well, if Taylor digs his way up in there, that thing's either going to go straight up over or it's going to come right towards me and swing the hill just a little bit. And then yeah. come right by me because there's some spots there. I can see 150 yards. 
Yep. And I said, Ooh, right in here. Plus there's more thick cover down here and thick cover over here. And there's a big open in the middle and I'm right there. Okay. And they, they can't get by me right here. I'm going to see. We're going to throw in some B roll of what we're talking about. Yeah. Let's throw in like, well, you know, we'll just keep right. throwing in some stuff. So as, as if you're watching the video as, for this, as you said, you're, you're starting to poke and it's gone up onto that shelf. Same was where the deer did the other day. Yes. I'm like, Oh, it's coming towards me. Beautiful. So I go up through there and I go up through and I get even with it. And then I start to go by it and you come along and kick it. And, and it goes cross it goes behind right you. over my track. Now yes. I don't know it because I'm about 150 yards out there farther and it does this. Oh, okay. But what it does do is there's, Two of them, like elevator shelves, mm -hmm. the skitters have, have made these two shelves. And they're about 200 yards yeah. staggered on the hill, 150 yards. But they close near the end yeah, around the far side. So I'm in the middle one. That way I can see up and down. But I can't see down over real good to the next one they don't, below me. Yeah, but. but I'm thinking it should be uphill for me. And I haven't seen a running track yet. I'm expecting to see a running track. And most of the time when you're doing this swing and coyote stuff, you're behind the eight ball. You're not normally. It's really, it's it. really hard to get all this stuff to work together. Right. With two guys, it's really hard to, yeah. And with so many with, options. With you playing goalie. Yeah. You're, you're kind of like doing and this. And of course I can't shoot anything. Right. So I'm down here going, Hey, Hey, well, like I can shoot a buck and you know, but right. I'm like, Right. Basically just trying to like yeah. keep the dough from going by me and push her back up towards you so you have a chance. Right. And yeah. of course, I, I, I'm swinging the hill. And as I'm going along, all of a sudden I get this feeling I'm being watched. And I look down the hill and there's a doe standing there looking uh. at me. Now, she's down there and she's about 100 yards, 120 yards. And she's got perfect snow around her. Okay. So I can see and it, it looks good. Looks like a doe she's naked sil eye. She's silhouetted. Silhouetted perfectly. beautiful. And it, yep. it's still sunny. It's nice in the evening, you know. Yep. And there's a, a good-sized tree covering her hind quarter. But I, I pulled the guy. I said, oh, deer right there. I just leaned out and looked. And there's a deer right there standing there looking at me. And I'm like, oh, perfect. So I pull the gun right up. And I'm thinking to myself, well, and I there's one. I saw a good buck track. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, well, maybe there's a buck with her, right? You know, I'm like, mm -hmm. maybe I ought to look for other deer. That's but right. I can just shoot, but I can't mess around, right? So yeah. I, for a half a second, I kind of hesitated as I, I put the safety off. I brought the gun right up. I lay it right on her. I start centering it on her shoulder. And I'm looking at her head, and she moves her head just a little bit. And it, that was enough confirmation. Yeah, definite, right definite dough. It, it's a dough. And I start to squeeze, and she pulls back. Well, as she pulls back and runs, I go, eh, and she slows down. And another deer takes off running, and I'm thinking, oh, there's a buck, right? And, and so I'm watching, and is it a buck or is it a fawn, right? I, I can't tell, and mm -hmm. I want to know for sure what I got. Oh, yeah. Because I don't want the two deer to get mixed up. Yes, and in the state of Vermont, you know, in, in the zone that we are, because we're, what zone are we? Are we J? J1. J1, and you can't shoot a spike cone in J1. No. So you have a doe permit. And you also have a buck tag, but yes. the buck has to have a fork on one side of an inch. Right. So, and I don't want to, so you can't, them. and if the ears are back and they're little, like we, you have to, you have to be super careful right now. Now, when I grunt at her, she doesn't run hard. She's just kangaroo and she's just loping away. Kaboom. And I'm yep. like, Oh, so I shift a little bit to try and see her as she's running and maybe she'll come to a stop somewhere where I can get a shot. Yep. And I'm pretty sure I've got my eyes on her the whole time. I did see the other deer running too, but okay. I've had my eyes on her and then they stop and I lose them right on the edge of this second shelf down below me. And now they're a good boo, 150 yards. So I'm just standing there and I'm listening and I grunt a couple times and I just wait and I'm waiting and waiting and about 30 seconds goes by. And so I boom, 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 just a little bit. And I'm trying to get to where I can see better. And then I grunt a little more and I boom, 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 move over a little bit more and it's looking pretty good, but I don't see anything. And I'm looking in the spot and I still can't see and I need to shift down and over to see a little better. So now I shift down and over and it's a little bit steeper of a bank. And of course, good old slippery wet snow right on a hardwood side hill. <laughs> well, I get a stick and then I go, whoa, ba, 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 <laughs> right? And I, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, boom, and I come to a stop down there. Yeah. Now it's, it's like a, to them, it's like I took off running at them. 
right? Oh, yeah. So as soon as I get to the bottom, I instantly <laughs> get ready to go, and I, I'm quiet because I, I need to hear if they're and, busting and off. See and see. Right. Yep. And I've actually got a decent view, and I see them again. And off they go. And they're coming back towards the trail. They're not pitching over the, the hump. They're mm-hmm. coming back into the trail of the flat spot. Okay. So now I want to move even more. But they're slowing. They're just do 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 And this is on the far end of the shelf. Yeah. Which is the opposite of where I am. Yes. I'm I'm over the mountain from you and I'm I'm quarter mile away. Because you've you've gone you've gone like this around it and I chased the deer that crossed over your track here. And now you're on this end and I have to come down around and go back. So our pinch point has changed from this to now it's this. Yes. But even that is a quarter mile or more. Yeah, it's huge. It's a huge, big, big When it comes to two people pinching a deer, that's huge. For the deer to run over it, that's only anywhere two minutes. Not even. Right. The deer can get over that hill in two minutes, but we're a quarter mile apart, right? You have to think real long range. So so the the deer just to do, to do, to do, and they they get down onto a little bit of shelf and some of the skid trail, and the skid trail does a roomp. The shelf does like this tip down of about 10, 15 feet, and then it smooths out again. And they're just uh, over that little tip down, and they're out in that part right there. So I get down onto the good walking, and I grunt, 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 grunt down onto the good walking. And then I pick up the pace, and I go a little quicker, and it's nice, quiet. It's not so spongy. Mm -hmm. You know, that softness, and there's no big sticks, and I can move right along pretty quick, quiet. So I just go quick, quiet right along, and I do these little tiny, tiny grunts just meh. And then boom, 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 And just as I'm starting to clear that little bit of rise and I'm really looking for him, they're there. <laughs> Again, and this time I can see definitely doe and fawn. Okay. And they're at about 65, working on 70 yards, working on 80 yards, right? But they're they're doing this and they're in and out of the scope, the two of them. Mm-hmm. And I'm just trying to pick out one as they're going. I don't care which one to shoot. I'll shoot both. Eat just a deer, right? One of them, please stop. And I'm grunting at them, right? <laughs> please stop. One of you just stop and look back and I will shoot you, right? And, and of course they keep going. And they come to a great big tree and they've got to pitch downhill just a little bit. And the first deer goes through and gets me lined up with a hole Mm -hmm. and I get ready for the second deer, which is junior and junior comes into that. And just as I pull the trigger and and I think the gun's a little high and I shoot and I go right over the back. Now I can remember the crosshair being about four or five inches below the back line. When I pulled the trigger, it was on the deer for sure. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure the gun's shooting high and it went right over the top of the deer's back. And the two of them now slow down and they go sideways to me. Yes. So the echo and the smoke is dying away as I shoot at them thinking they're not going to stop. And when I shoot, they stop. And now I could just shoot them. Right. They're but, stopped and they're even broadside because but you they were quartering down the hill and they <laughs> went down a bank and then turned broadside and faced up the hill. So now they're broadside standing there and they're looking at me and I'm saying, damn muzzle loaders. Right? And then now you have to mess around and reload. So awesome. I put the gun down and I'm looking at him <laughs> and I dig into my pocket and I pull out a speed loader and I crack one end of it. Right. And I'm looking down and I start tipping it to get the powder. And then I remember, because I feel this loose powder going all over my hand. And I'm thinking pellets, right? I've been using pellets forever, right? Mm-hmm. And this new muzzle loader, i got to use loose powder. So now I'm pouring powder all over my hand and I don't have a good load full, right? And it just goes all over the place. And I'm thinking, well, there goes half the charge all over the place. <laughs> I guess we don't have to bother with that one, right? So I put the cap back on it, right? And then I pick up the gun and I dump it out of my scope and I dump it out of my barrel. I get all the loose, the powder that did make it in. Yeah, because it's only Some half, of it made like, it in, some of it didn't. That, yeah, so. And I, I'm just thinking pellets, just bring the two pellets down to the end and I'll put them in there. No. So now I've got this powder mess, right? So there goes one of my loads. So I put that in a different pocket and I take out a new load. Mm -hmm. And this time I'm looking at it 
uh, I'm grunting. And they're and still I, standing there? No, they've now picked up and moved up the bank 15, 20 feet where I can't see them, but they're still standing there. I crack it open and I dump the powder in. <laughs> I get the bullet and I set the bullet in the top of it right there oh, and man. I ran the bullet home, right? And I pick the gun up and I break it open and I take out my primer and I put a new primer in there and I clink and and off they go. So now they're there. They take off running and I, uh, and then chunk, 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 right after him, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm a buck. And she's mm-hmm. like, what is with this guy? <laughs> and she's just, dang, da, 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 da. she's doing mm-hmm. what she always does. She's like a, the golden retriever of deer. Yeah. She's she just, just hanging she out. Doesn't right? care. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't care. <laughs> she just runs 200 yard circles around people. She just lives around people. Yeah. <laughs> she's never been really chased before. I've never chased her. This doe that has been living at my shop. I've never chased her. This is new to her. So <laughs> now she's side hilling up the hill, and I get onto you with a radio because you call me and say, "Hey, pops, what's going on?" Right? You yeah. Heard me that, shoot. Was that you shooting? Yeah. Now I assume that you've climbed the hill and heard me shoot over on the far side, and now you're on top of the hill, and you're going to come along the peak of the hill where the trail is but you're not you go back down and around and go on the opposite side of the hill yes and we now we we do this the top goes like that and we go like this yes now i didn't know that i thought you were coming over the top which would have been beautiful but i also know because before i have chased deer to myself up here and it can be done if you swing it exactly the way i've been doing it I have chased deer to myself because there's this beautiful green patch near the top and the deer will run up into that green patch and stop up there. And it's about 500 yards from where you started the deer. So I said, they're just going to run up in that patch and stop. I'm going to finish swinging the bottom because it's beautiful and it's level and I can haul. And when you come along the top, they'll just automatically boom right into me. Yep. I didn't know that you were down over the hill. Yes, because meanwhile, you're doing all of this, and I hear the, right, and I get the camera and blah blah blah. So I turn and I'm and I hear greenery, right? And of course, you're talking about like because you're like, hey, that spot, the spot that you just explained. Yes. You explain that, and I think above the well, greenery by the bridge. Oh. Right, so I'm like, I can do that, dog. <laughs> so I fly, fly off the top. And down I, I go that. down over the bottom, and I, I don't take the first shelf. I take the lower one because the lower one is down by the bridge, and it's quieter, and that's where most of the greenery are. And if they come down and try to go in where the brook gets turns into a little gully and goes down across the ro- main drag down here, I was mm-hmm. like, we want to we wanna have that sewed up. Right. Right. And so, you're not as brushed up with the far side of the mountain as you are with our side of the mountain. Yes. I'm on the shop side of right. the mountain back here. And I know the other side of the mountain just yes. almost as well as this side. Yes. And have been chasing them around so for years. I, so I go down and <laughs> and I get down to the bottom yeah. and, I, and I start crossing around and I don't see any tracks and I don't see anything. And I look way off in the hardwoods and I see a tail go whoo, backwards towards you. I just see a deer go whoop, towards you. And I'm like, it yeah. was it was like 175 yards, just like a tiny little white tail, just whoop, now, way, the, way Is that off. going to the, the east or to the west? It's going towards the east, that oh, way. Okay. Right? And I'm like, that's a different mission deer. accomplished. You're welcome, dad. Right. <laughs> right? It's coming up the hill. I, and that's when I'm like, I just jumped a deer. It's coming right at you. Yep. Right? And so I'm like, well, I'll stand here for a little while longer. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I go down to the bottom one. And I get down to the bottom where you and I were sniffing around and saw the bed a couple few days ago. Right. So that bottom shelf is really green, and we've we've been seeing deer down there. Right. So I go down there, and I stop, and I stand there. And I'm waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And I don't know that I'm significantly lower than you. Right. The level of the mountain, the ring around the mountain that you are at, is significantly higher than me. I'm way lower, right. but I'm looking up through the hardwoods and on coming towards the next shelf above me, I see two deer. It's a doe and a fawn. But this is after I shot again. But I didn't hear that shot. 
Oh. I only heard two shots today, dude. Oh. And this and the the other one was way back earlier. And then the one right here close to dark. I didn't oh, okay. hear the one in between it. Okay, now let See? me get to that part so, of the story. So right? that is when I just saw those two deer, it must be after you shot the second time. Yeah. So what happened? Okay, so what happens is I I shoot at the deer and they take off running and they've got about 250 yards of hardwoods and then they get to the softwoods. The softwoods are about 300 yards thick and they make up the next downwards side of the east side of the hill. Mm-hmm. And they run up onto it. And there have been times when I have jumped a deer over on the end. It ran up through the hardwoods, got in the softwoods, a little bit on the other side of the hill. I skirted the whole thing and met them coming down. Or went up in there and ran right into them. Because mm-hmm. they tend to run through that big opening. Slower. And then hit that big green patch. And it's a big, good-sized green patch. And it's fairly thick. But you no got you to be moving. That's like playing catch with yourself. Yeah, but see, the deer get up in there and stop because no one ever goes in there. And they go in and bed there. They hang out there all the time. It's a really undisturbed spot. Okay. And they they crawl right into it. And it's also great because they can shoot off in any direction. Yeah. So they go up into that stuff. And if I were to continue on the side hill, it's so slippery and I'll make so much noise. And I need to drop down and get on the logging road because as soon as I get on the logging road, now I can swing it all real careful. And they usually come off the end and they either come off the end towards the southeast or the northeast. They, and they don't go straight off the middle. It's a huge giant hardwoods and there's cover areas on the corners. Mm -hmm. so i i usually when they get up in there i hit the first one and i wait and if they don't come down through to that then i start swinging over to the other one there's been a few times where i've turned and come back up and then gone in and hit them and then they cross right so and they always like to usually go the northeast corner because there's another long finger that is beautiful with ledge and some greenery on it and they can run down that Mm -hmm. and then bust out so what what happens so they go up in there and I swing out around and I'm thinking you're coming over the top with them Mm -hmm. and that you're about to keep them from going Southeast and they'll have to come in my corner. So as I'm going, I'm just going slow and I'm paying attention and I'm not making any noise. I wasn't calling or anything. And I get right to the intersection now in the corner where I can see everything. Yep. I know right where you are now. And I just get to that, almost to that intersection perfectly. And I'm looking up in the woods and I just stop and I'm listening and I hear chunk, chunk. And I said to myself, oh, they must be coming. And I'm watching and I'm not seeing anything. And then it's real quiet for a while. And I step over just a little bit. Boom, boom, and there they go. Now, they run up the hill some, and mom's in a lead. And I almost get a shot at mom. She goes through a pretty decent hole. I pick out the hole, and she right through. And I said, well, when Junior gets there, it's had the radish, right? (laughs) And Junior gets into it, and I pull the trigger. And it's the same thing. The, The crosshairs are four or five inches below the back. I pull the trigger, and must have went right over the top. Yeah. That's my guess. Yeah. And it's a quartering away, you know, semi broadside. Kind of a difficult semi shot. broadside yeah. quartering yeah. away shot. You know, just boom. and they choop 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 and they stop again after I shoot. Now the echo is still dying away, and the deer are standing there again. And I'm saying to myself. The fog is drifting through the trees. <laughs> no one's been hurt. I can tell right then. No one's been hurt, right? Stinky holy, muzzle loader. Holy right? Shit. So now I'm pouring I'm pouring another load in there. <laughs> Meanwhile, I can feel the blood running down oh. between my eyes because somehow it, the scope it's whacked. Hunched or something. I, I was twisted a little bit and, and it rocked pretty good. And maybe some of that extra powder was down in there from the half not filling it right. Maybe. So the thing. The what thing, is what is happening right thing, now? <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, this is, it, thank God there's nobody filming this. This is bad. Right. So, so I'm. I, I'm loading the gun, and a drop of blood lands on my <laughs> on my hand, hand, right? And I, and I'm thinking, oh, loose powder, right? So I pour it in, I get it, I push a bullet in there, boom, and I 
pull a primer out and I stick another primer in it and I clink and then I put it together and I didn't think it was cocked. So I broke it back open and I pulled it pulled it good. Yeah, because you sure got you got cocked. a woodsman arm, so you gotta yeah. kinda and you gotta you make have sure to make that sure that little little thing is red, right? Yeah. And it wasn't and I pulled it cluck and it boom. Now and you go. I'm okay. There you go. Here we go again. Now I'm thinking that they are going to run directly into you. And they I'm did. figuring you're paralleling them and you're on top of the hill with them oh. and they're 150 yards from okay. you. I thought you and I were a lot closer and I'm thinking they're going to run right into him and they're going to either, he's either going to get them on film. Cause I said, they're coming, they're headed right up to the top and they're going on the little side trail along the top. Yeah. So like, you're going to see him any second and you didn't answer me. And I thought, well, he's probably already filming them. Yeah. Now, I'm pretty sure I didn't touch him, but I want to go to the shot where I fired. The spot where I fired, I want to walk right to the stump that they went by where yes. I fired. Yeah. I want to walk over to where you I gotta, fired. You got to do your CSI. You gotta but I'm pretty sure I can just swing it on the road because they're only 40 yards from a logging road. I could just swing it on the road and just find right out. You know, yeah. And being snow, I could just go right back and look pretty easy yeah. and find that spot. But I'm like, no, just walk up to it. Yep. So I walk right up to the spot. And I get right to where I shot and there's nothing. And then I see where they ran and went up on a little bank and then stopped and walked a little bit. And now I'm just in it. I'm almost out in the open where I can see again and it's a 150 yard view. So I'm looking out in the open as I go because they've been stopping every time I shoot. They just kind of stop and they just meander okay. a little bit and they're not doing anything. So this is when the two stories intersect. Yes, because because now, I see them come. I see them running across the top and they're hop, hop, hop. And then they stop and slow down. And she does this. And looks back towards me. Yes. Yeah. And I, I, as soon as they turn, I start filming. Now I'm on the peak of the hill. Yes. And I'm not quite in view of you and yes. the deer. Yes. And I, I just see took over the thing a little bit. And I'm like, oh, they're right there. So I take off running for the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. And she goes dunk it dunk it dunk down. And there she had about 150 yards before she would come into sight of you. So what, what happened to the so other So she deer, went though? the 150 yards and I couldn't see her, but she was now coming into sight of you. Yes, because and there was I'm a down, pretty good space. I'm down, there's a shelf like this and a shelf like this, and I'm down on this one and they came down from the top and went this way. Right. Right. So they come into my view. <laughs> I started filming them, you know, and they're just doing their thing and do to do. And, um, she gets behind some stuff and I'm like, well, I want to slide over a little bit. Right. There's nothing I can do. I don't know where you are. And if they don't stay right, I'm in a spot where I can't help anymore. So I'm, I just slide over and she goes whoop, and turns and looks and looks right down towards me. She heard the droop, droop, right. Smart. And so I film and all of a sudden she starts hopping off. She takes off and starts headed back around this side west. And that's when I tell you, I just saw them. They're headed west. She's fine. Right. Yeah. When you look in the film. Right. They're fine. They're fine. I didn't touch them. Not even close. They're happy and right. waggling their tails. And she, the, the fawn goes eh, up to her tail. You missed by a mile. The golden retrievers of deer. Somehow, <laughs> right? They're bulletproof. They're bulletproof retrievers today. So they start skirting back around this way. And I think you're going to be right behind them. Right. So I duck down and I make that big swing that I made earlier on the deer that went straight up. Right. I get back down in the green stuff and I go all the way back to exactly where I met up with the running deer track I jumped earlier. And before you made that swing, you radioed me, right? Yes. And you said, they're going on to our shop. Yes. And that's when you decided to went, and you went up on top. And yes. then, cause I go and I skirt this way and I, I'm looking for their tracks and I'm looking for fresh tracks, doing a big hook, nothing, 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 nothing. I get to that select cut where the first deer ran up over the ledge yes. before I heard you shoot the first time Right. and nothing. And I'm staying there and I'm like, well, they're not getting past me. Yeah. Right. right There's nowhere they can go. I've got them. If right. they're going to come down, I'll get film of it and I'll know. Meanwhile, you're on the side, they're in the middle, and I've gone all and we the way go, around. And we go past them, and they, they don't go, they don't leave the shelf that I left them on. Right. The, and you go too high, I go too low, and way past them. Yes, well, we just yeah. kind of did this and said, oh, no, yeah. and then we pulled back, right? Yes, so and then both of us did this and middle. tucked back in like that. So we made like this. We hooked and then went back into there, and yes. then that's when you saw and shot them 
or shot at them the last time. Right. So I get on the cliff and it is a cliff. Okay. This is all coming together. And now. the cliff where you came up yep. originally, I'm on your track. You went way over there. So when I thought I heard something way up on the top in the hemlocks, that was yes, you then. that was me in the hemlocks. Okay. okay. I can hear now, you a mile away. Now, when I came down the hemlocks a little bit and I could see our clear cut. Yep. And I can almost see the shelf and the blowdowns where we jumped the original deer. They're, they've got to be standing near those blowdowns. They're probably I know eating. right that's, where these deer are. That's where all the deer have been eating the last right. three days. That's probably and where And I'm they like, are. she's right over there. <laughs> and I can't quite get to it quietly, right? And I'm looking down the hill, and I should be seeing you because I know you've gone by, and I can't see you coming back. I, I stayed out quite a ways, though. I stayed just tucked over the yeah. into the stuff so that way it, I wouldn't get busted. Well, it's getting darker and darker. And yeah. I'm waiting for you to just kind of finish crawling up in there because if you'd have come up onto the shelf, you'd have put them right in my lap. I was standing right where mm -hmm. they would have been executed, right? I could have put the barrel against the chest as they ran by. <laughs> I had closed the door right there. There was no getting out. They, you were going to see them. I was going to see them. It's just a case of whether I was going to get a shot or not. Yeah. So I'm trying to slide around that, right? And I'm going around, and I can almost, and then I hear chunk chunk over there farther, and I'm like, oh, man, they're right there. And, and they're like 60 yards. Yeah. yeah. They're right over here. Yep. So I'm trying to peek around the corner, and it's this wall, and it is steep, yes, steeper is. than steep. And I'm in the middle of this super steep. Nowhere to and go. And there's a little tiny spot about 20 feet down below me that is kind of flat, and I wish I was standing there. And so I put my foot down real careful, and I grab this little small beech tree, right, that's anchored pretty good, and I test it, and it's, it should hold me. And I try <laughs> oh and my make God, we don't a need couple that. of sticks, I, a couple of steps. And I'm going a little bit, and the tree goes, and breaks off. And now I go, down the hill, right? <laughs> that's, that's the sound you heard was me. Now I go here to the door, at least here to the door. I got 20 feet, almost end over end. And I managed to stay on, I skied on one foot for quite a distance. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying not to, it's rocks and everything oh, else. Oh, yeah. And I'm picking up speed. Stumps. It's, and, it's going oh, that. Faster, faster. <laughs> and I get to the bottom on this and I land and I go, punk, 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 and I stop, right? Yeah, right on the edge. And now I'm saying, that screwed it up. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't, that, that, you might as well just drove a tractor trailer in there and <laughs> smashed it and rolled it Have over. A marching right? band walking in yeah, with the drums. Same and, difference. Yeah. Right? So I'm swinging. So now I'm just standing there listening and I don't hear any running. And I should be able to hear them running. I just heard a few steps over there. Yeah. And they you, didn't run when so. I did this. So the first thing I do is, ah. <laughs> after making this giant, right? Naturally. <laughs> it's worth a try. Yeah. So I take four or five steps. And now I can almost see the blowdowns. And I'm like, wow, this is a really good spot. I can see a little bit better. So I eh, step, 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 right up. And I get right up on top. And there they are right there. <laughs> right? And they do this. And I grunt at them again. And they stop. Wow. Now, the first one is the fawn to run. And the fawn goes running down through past the stump. And I get all lined up. And mom goes, boom, 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 stump. And I can see his hind quarter and a stump and then some body. And I'm like, so I put it right on it. And now it's starting to get dark. I can't. It's getting close to shooting yeah, time. Yeah, we, we've almost got, I got like, like 10, 10 minutes. minutes. Right. Yeah. So I, I get the gun up and I look at it and I'm like, yep. And I'm trying to confirm for sure that I'm shooting what I'm shooting. And I want to keep it down, right? Yep. So I bring it down just to, I got to aim low, right? Apparently. I'm pretty sure I got to aim low. So I bring it down a little bit and I pull the trigger. And just as I'm about to finish pulling the trigger, she turns her head and she does it to the <laughs> left just a little bit. Yep. And I'm trying to shoot here and she turns to the left and I'm pretty sure a shot right beside her. Yeah. Had just kind of had like that. Bend. Just perfect timing of out of the way. Like a swinging door. Well, what does she do naturally? There's this cloud of smoke, and she goes, run, to you run, dun, 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 boom, boom. And stops. And then goes, whoop, over that big, huge butternut tree. Yep. She jumps over the butternut tree, toom, and a fawn goes over. And then it goes, bunk, bunk, bunk. And they stop in the wide open down there at about 100 yards, and I can just shoot them. But my gun's empty. Muzzle loader problems. Muzzle loader. So I'm saying, uh, here we go again, right? So I start loading up. 
Now I'm, mm-hmm. I'm out of speed loaders. Like you're right? making a potion out of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I start the bullet down in. I get my ramrod on it. And the bullet is seating a little hard, but I come to s- s- start it. And the bullet tilts and falls out in the snow. Clink. <laughs> now the sabot is still there and the oh, bullet cute. is gone. Cute. So I'm thinking, well, I don't want to put a wet bullet down my barrel right now. That wouldn't be a good idea. No. So I just got grab a new one, right? So I grab a new one and I set it in there and I push it down in. And you put I, another bullet back in the original sabot. Yeah, then. the sabot just sat there and okay. stayed. And they're the there. same, right. so it doesn't right. matter. So I, I just put it right in. I push it down in there. And now I, I shove it down in there and I get the ramrod out and I put it back in. I put a new primer in there and I walk, you know, five, six steps. And I can't see the deer anymore. I can't hear the deer anymore. They had they left seemed to while be gone. you were doing yes. stuff. Yeah, seemed to be gone, but I'm pretty sure they walked away. That's it. They, it wasn't a running. Yes, it was a walking. Yeah. And this is right after, because right about then, I was like, "Hey, yeah, what's the deal?" Because it's right? been, it's been, and I'm, I'm not minutes. really. I really don't want to answer you because, for one, I don't want a radio in my hand. I can't stand up. It's so freaking <laughs> steep. You know, it's steeper than steep right there. Oh yeah. So I, I'm trying to walk. I, I'm trying to see. I'm trying to listen. Yep. You come on the radio, and I can't hardly stand up. I take about ten steps and almost fall down again. And I get back up, and I finally. Get on solid ground, right? I mean, it's like there. Now there's these all these blowdowns all over the place, and I we weasel my way through the blowdowns, and it's nothing but tracks. There's a million deer tracks right there. They'd spent two days there, and this is right when I come up to the top of the bank, and I yeah, and and of course I'm okay. looking for blood. I'm looking for running tracks, and I know right where. And the you're spot making is. blood. I'm making my own blood, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and now I can't find squat because there's nothing but deer tracks everywhere. Yeah. And I'm not seeing any blood. And I'm pretty sure that the deer almost walked away. And where they're right there still. Or they're standing there. So I'm kind of watching for them. And I'm walking down to where I last saw them. And I'm looking everywhere there. And now it's dark. There's no more shooting. Oh, yeah. It's over. It was over. And I whip out my light which apparently had been on in my pocket for a while or something. So it's pretty faded and it doesn't work for squat. I got you. And, and I'm I trying, to, trying to see, and then you come up over the bank and you've got your light and it's like, no, and yeah. we go a little ways and there's the tracks. Yeah, we found them. And there's not a drop of blood and no. they're walking. They're yeah. walking away. So we take, like, oh, we take man. the track into the two, 300 oh, yards oh, and we, and they just walked out of there. They just like, we're like, Peace yeah. and left. See you later. Nice and calm. Yeah. No blood. <laughs> Everything's fine. And we're like, what? What kind of a day? Oh my god. I've had some good opportunities. I saw four deer today, though. Yeah. I today, mean, I, like I, we I had was, stuff going on. I was trying to count. I saw these deer seven times. You know, seven times. That's pretty good. And and I I jumped them and jumped them and jumped them and jumped them and I shot at them three times. So. It was a good tracking job. It was nice to have familiar yeah. woods. That helped like crazy. Yes. It was nice to have her really, I'm Placid sure she's been docile. Yeah, she's been chased a lot by bucks. She's heard a lot of buck grunting and whatnot, and yeah. that's obvious from the tracks around here. So, like, there, she's been, and and she doesn't get dogged or chased much, so you can tell, and, and that's a, a really a bonus thing. What a great if training ground. If you're in an ground. area. What a when, great training ground. Yeah. So they would have been, like, a beginning tracker. This would have been, like, a mint day for them. Yeah. It would have been great for me, because when they were standing up there, I could have got either of them. Yeah. No problem. I just yeah. pull. Yeah. And, of course, I can't. And I was like, damn it, right? I was, ugh. And it's not like I was super excited, I wasn't super excited about this. It was just like, there's a deer. Let's shoot it, right? You can. Just, yeah. just shoot it. Let's just, do it. Just shoot it. And and I was doing that, but we weren't hitting anything. And stuff was just falling apart. And the man. crosshairs are on the deer. So something's going on, and we got to figure it out. Yeah, tomorrow you know? we're going to investigate. So we're I'm going to shoot that gun tomorrow and see what the about deal four or five hundred times. And and I did take one pretty decent spill with it once because i've been muzzleloader hunting for two weeks now Mm -hmm. i've been carrying a gun for two weeks you did take a pretty good yeah digger yeah i did take one really good digger with it which is but not horrendous and and i'm sure everything's probably okay and and maybe it's just me but boy i'm pretty sure and it's been 
fairly rare for me to miss. Yeah. The other thing is actually been, really rare. The other thing that's really stunk about this so far is that the, with the antler restriction, I could have shot and had a couple of good shots. And because I couldn't verify the head. 100%. Yeah. And make sure I wasn't shooting a spike. That made it really tough to, to you know, because especially one of them was a really, oh, it was a piece of cake and I just could not see the head. And, and that was a bummer. You know, that's Jimmy's one been of hating things. on it too. Jimmy's, Jimmy's He's seen like spike after spike. APR. And it's like He's after, like, after, like it, after six like weeks of deer hunting. And you finally get your chance. That spike horn's a trophy to Coco Puff. He wants it. And he's like, dude, you know, nope, you can't. You're on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't really dig the APR right now. Plenty of scientific and personal reasons why. What a day of hunting though. Like, and this, this all went down in about two hours. Yeah, and those are the rules, and I don't mind the rules, you know? No, it is what it but is. But when you've been digging and going so long, it's like, oh, man. Uh -huh. and, and and especially when you're pretty sure that it's a doe and a fawn, but you're not completely sure, and it might be a doe and a buck. the ears, the ears right? It could be a, a spike yeah. in a doe or something. You just, you never know. Yeah. And, or they could switch places, <laughs> and it's like, boy, that's... So it is what it is, you yep. know? But what a, what a day, and... uh what a lot of fun and yeah. uh, get the scars to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why the thing caught me. I mean, I shoot magnums all I'm 60, 70 rounds of magnum. This month, this like this in, fall? in November. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like, so I've done a lot of shooting. I shoot a lot. Oh, yeah. And for a gun to catch me is really unusual. It's unusual. And I don't know why, but this thing just barks and it just it got me you were just you're probably at just an awkward of an angle yeah, trying to make it work i got i just could barely got nicked once going for a partridge because it was like it was just kind of weird and how i had to be and it just barely it was like just tiny tiny little bit you know sometimes you're just you know you're a little choked up on it or a little far back and it all happens so quick you know and it goes pow and then you just go about your life and you didn't notice that it hit you well, you did, it looks yeah. like. Yeah, I'm like, boy, that got me. Yeah. I thought it was the bridge of my nose, and I didn't think it was up on my... I didn't even realize it was on my forehead. Between your eyes there. Yeah, I yeah. didn't even realize that. But You've been getting... This has been this has been a rough year for I you. I want to say this is like the third time in my whole life I've ever done it. Yeah. And I have literally shot, I don't know... Thousands. Tens of thousands of rounds. I mean, so for that to happen is really unusual for me, but hey, whatever. I don't care. It is what it is. <laughs> it's a good scratch. As have. is <laughs> another day of muzzleloader in Vermont. <laughs> Vermont has just been this like nuts, just crazy thing since we got back. And, and of course, there's no wind today. Wind would have been awesome. Wind would have been really nice because the walking's quiet, but not quiet enough to... And they can hear so good. And they're tuned up. The yeah. deer are tuned the up. The coyotes in Vermont, it's insane. I've seen more coyotes in the last week, the tracks, than ever, ever. Yeah. Like you and I... So we did this loop. And of course, I went through that intersection a couple times today. And I had fresh coyote tracks in my tracks. Yeah. during this two hours so yeah. they're in there running around with us right on our tracks with yeah. they are within a few hundred yards of me today we we spent um and they're even been digging, the last this I week don't. we've been in a couple of really big huge pieces of woods and that's the only thing you see is predator tracks. and they're, they're everywhere no deer tracks everywhere uh, we went almost a mile in a straight line today and never cut a deer track um in really good habitat I love those, those are some woods nice today. woods. Oh, they were nice, nice woods, good for deer, yep. and you didn't even see browsing. There was no moose in nope. there whatsoever. No, nope. and there was even not even old browsing. And there's a lot of places like that where it's giant hardwood desert, and there's nothing but coyote and fox tracks. Bobcat occasionally. They clean up in there. And most of the time, they're just traveling through on these like log and skitter yeah, roads. Yeah, they have routes that they use in their cycles. Because right now, coyotes are coming into their season. Oh, yeah. So they're marking territory and they're tearing it up out back up here oh, everywhere. Yeah. And that's yeah. one of the reasons why they're doing so much, you know, activity during the day is because of that. Cram Hill, uh, Roxbury was yep. just absolutely loaded with coyote yep. tracks. If you want a predator hunt, go to Cram Hill. It has on the an east, orange. On the east Roxbury side. Seriously. And go up to them gates and go out there with your 
your squeal call and sit down on one of them logging no roads problem. and the, the, the logging roads are like coyote highways mm-hmm. and they're running up and down them. And, and especially where their coyotes have, uh, their, their, uh, ca- calling cards, their, you know, their four wheel burnouts they make, mm-hmm. they make them all the way up the roads. Like we're two territories of two different packs come Outback, together. Out back here yeah. is another place. Yeah. Groton state forest is another place. Oh my God. It's, it's just, just it's constant, you know, all by spruce. Yep. There's a lot of them. And like, that's what we should have been doing. We when should, we weren't seeing any deer. We should do this. We should have been squealing and calling in a dog. I think, I think, you know, we could have easily done that. And from now no on, problem. especially during muzzler season, I'm going to start doing that a little we bit should. more. When you're in a giant piece of woods, you drove half three quarters of an hour to get there. You go walk a mile up into them woods and there's no deer around whatsoever. And there's nothing but coyote tracks. You might as well and you're coyote. on one of those, you might just as well squeal and holler and maybe you'll see one. I'd like to get some footage of one too. Yeah. That'd because be cool. I've, I've seen four in all my years of hunting, actually being in the woods, I've seen four. Yeah. I've seen more coyotes on the interstate than I have in mm-hmm. the woods, and they're not easy to get. Oh, no. When you're walking and moving through the woods, it's not easy to get oh, no. film because your interactions most of the time are like, you come over a rise or around a corner, and there they are, and you both go, oh, and then they run, yeah. which was the case in, when you and I were in Maine mm-hmm. for rifle. Yeah, Beeve's the only one that's gotten decent coyote footage, you know, of them yeah. just walking. Just a going. pup. That was that's on a that'll be a throwback right. coming up here yeah, in a we'll while. Dig that one out. Yeah, that'll be a good one. But that's our day. That was our Friday. That was our defrag after hunting. That's our defrag, guys. We just had to because we we're in the woods and we we're like, what happened today? We yeah, just had to. And and we, we had, had to, to get our two out. sides of the story straight there. The way it, way it all went down. Yeah, and that's that's big part of hunting is talking about that kind of stuff. Because there's lessons to be learned and, and also to like how it went down and how it happened. It gets it. So if you, if you get back into the, that same patch of woods and you try to work it again, now I know how he's thinking because we've had a chance to explain it to each other. Well, not only that, but you'll come up with your lingo for that area. Like yes. you'll end up developing like some speech, you know? It, yeah. Because like we're talking about stuff that you guys, like what you're imagining in your head, right. Is not probably looks nothing like what it actually is like well, but of course you and i both have the same terms we're like yeah. this over here and that over there and where this does that and of course we both know that so it works mm-hmm. you know well you're trying to describe in a pretty undescribable place you know and you'll come up with your own little mm-hmm. lingo for that spot <laughs> and you'll come up with a name for it remember when we jumped that buck and he was laying in that big hey you remember that one time show? when when we did that yeah i'm over there Right. We do that all the time. Jimmy, dad, dad was in, uh, dad was talking to Jimmy. He's like, I'm by the brush pile. <laughs> and Jimmy's like, this is Maine. You know how many brush piles there are? I'm by the gravel pit. And he's like, there's 10 on this logging road. Where are you? <laughs> Jimmy gets <laughs> your vague instructions. Jimmy just goes nuts over that. It's hilarious. <laughs> But a lot of times, though, you know, where you saw the rabbit drink out of the puddle, and we all did that. I know exactly. That was the day I, we dragged I could Logan's say to you, out. Yeah, I could say mm-hmm. to you, we're by the rabbit puddle. Yeah. And you would know exactly where uh-huh. that is, right? So you come up with your own lingo for an area. Yeah, the and, communication. Yeah, and then be able to describe where you are and which direction things were and be able to do that. That's a really good communication skill because you end up like you'll learn if the person's understanding what you're laying down or not. Clearly not. And there's not a lot on of that. When they you know, know, the green patch over there by that. And of course our radios are junk. We <laughs> do not have good radios. There are not good. We have not discovered Radio communication that's worth a plum nickel. Well, we usually have one good one and one crap one. And I've and got the good one. <laughs> You've got the good one. I've got the crap and that's one. A, uh, Mine listens beautiful. I, 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 and when yeah. you speak and you say what's going on, you don't need to listen to me as long as I can hear you. We're good. Because most of the time, I, I'm knowing the well, words. I'm swinging. I'm that doing works. my things. And you just say, this is what's going on. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. You know, and that works out. But <laughs> And of course, I'm like, when I get when I see you, I'm going to shoot that radio. I am going to shoot that radio. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care who bought it. I hate that radio. It's junk. It's junk. And of course we could use our cell phones. 
We could text. In oh yeah, seconds. I totally forgot we have service. We're right, used. We we're not used to doing that. Right. We, we, we never hunt where there's service. So right. Well, that's true. Yeah, we could have been doing that instead of <laughs> FaceTime from Taylor. Dad, where are you? <laughs> that would actually work. <laughs> I'm over here. I'd be like, oh okay. We're not doing that. I'm not gonna. I, I'd rather not. I'd rather guess. I'd rather just guess and just hunt. Now. I don't want to talk if, to you. If on my we cell had phone. the the Rhino radios, which a lot of people use, yeah, that and, would probably and, work pretty good. It would be fine, and that's fine. But by the same token, it would take some of the fun out of it because we love describing where we are, what we're the, doing, the unexpected <laughs> like surprises. <laughs> I dripped on the bar boy. <laughs> yeah. <to> the brush <laughs> pile. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Okay. If you're listening in on a podcast, thank you so much for tuning in plenty of stuff coming if yeah. you're watching this on youtube like subscribe hello thanks Thank for so watching yep. we'll see you guys in the next one we're going back out tomorrow we got two more days left of vermont muzzleloader and i think you and i are going to hang it up after that we've got to well, get, oh, we got it just we, we got to get the cameras a little more busy today was just a you know fly by the seat of your pants yeah let's just go out and we weren't expecting to really see anything or have anything happen and nope. then all of a sudden it just the did. entire vermont deer herd was in our backyard <laughs> and we didn't realize it and then we bumped into them all and they went flying everywhere and now they're all gone to other parts <laughs> so that's the way it goes yep. do what you can with what you get crazy we'll see you guys next time thank you for supporting the show appreciate it and we'll talk to you soon happy hunting happy hunting bye-bye